if you look at the continent with already the changing climate and with the potential of reaching 1.5 degrees as the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report did show just about a month ago, the continent agricultural production will reduce by up to 40 percent. A major contributor to food scarcity in the country has been massive post-harvest losses that occur due to low value addition, inadequate cold storage facilities and poor infrastructure. In Kenya, annual post-harvest losses in fresh horticulture, like bananas, are estimated at more than 50 percent. According to data contained in the 2018 Economic Survey, farmers lost bananas worth 5.6 billion Kenya shillings, posing a great challenge as well as an opportunity. Trigger Foods was founded in 2014. It started off matching vendors with farmers. Our main crop is bananas. We deal with around 60 to 80 tons of bananas, all the way from Meru, Taveta, Kirinyaga and Embu as our main crop. Our other crops are potatoes, tomatoes, onions, pineapples, watermelons and some other small fruits and vegetables. Trigger harvests bananas from both large and small scale farmers. From Meru County, Trigger Foods ships 40 to 45 tons of bananas on a daily basis. What we look for when we come to the farm is first, uh, we have two processes. Normally, we have a staff that is called a scout who has to come and check the bananas. That's the first point of quality. Um, they have to go around a banana farm, um, check the mature bananas. They don't have sharp edges. When you look at uh, premature bananas, they kind of have sharp edges. And then they also look for bananas that don't have uh, pest and diseases. The new Akadio Nilkona Potesa Mandisana, Managa Kunandisi, the Queen of Yakwasamba. Apolambiwa when we get to the farm, once harvesting, dehanding, cleaning, we normally now weigh whatever is from that farm, and then those details are put into our still our data management system that will now be used to be able to pay the farmer the following day. So we primarily rely on technology to be able to move our operations and to be able to attend to our farmers. The farm will be sent a message as a confirmation that we have received uh, their, their goods and then also a physical document will be raised just to convince the farmer that Trigger has taken their goods and we will be able to pay them within 24 hours. Since its inception, Trigger Foods has managed to control the supply chain from end to end. Helping farmers like Morioki reduce their post-harvest losses cost, time, and mechanical damages during transportation. So we are able to control the whole supply chain and ensure that the farmer gets the best deal they can in the market. Trigger has invested in modern, state-of-the-art cold rooms that control the natural ripening process by managing temperature and humidity. These cold rooms can hold up to 500 metric tons of bananas and this allows them to hold enough stock to cover for a daily supply of 100 tons of bananas a day. Mango is one of the key fruits produced in Kenya for the domestic and export markets. However, 50 to 70 percent of mangoes produced in Kenya are lost along the supply chain. When I started growing the mangoes, I didn't know where to take them. I was expecting just local market around here. But it came a time when it was, uh, the market was so flooded in a way that uh, I almost lost everything. So uh, it became a very big challenge for me. Before we joined Baba and Button, we could even lose about three to four tons because there was no market for it. It reached to a time when I 
even thought of disbanding the whole farming. Value addition and produce processing are key aspects in reducing post-harvest losses, boosting food security, and increasing profits for the farmers like Peter Muinde. Sweet Tunda is an agro-processing company that buys fruits, processing them, and bridging this gap. Sweet Tunda really has come about because of the huge waste that happens at the farm, at the source of the, the fruit, where at the moment, especially with mangoes, about 70% of mangoes, that's about 500, 600,000 tonnes, never reaches the market. And Kenya consumes about 250,000 tonnes. Working with over 1,000 farmers, and uh, half of those have been, over half of those have now been through Global Gap, which is good agricultural practice. Sweet Tunda is adding value to 500 tons, which will result in 50 tons of value-added product. You'll see there's a, there's a fairly wide range of products. We have mango, raspberry, strawberry, banana, pineapple and tomato. We try and touch on those types of fresh fruit products that have a short shelf life uh, when they're fresh and we try and extend their life through dehydration. That sounds fun. On the other side, in Limuru, is Savannah Brands. Savannah Brands is about using local produce to make food and beverages that are mass-produced using a lot of flavoring. They produce iced teas, punchy fruit ciders, and snacks. It's most importantly about quality and authenticity of our products, um, and using stuff that we know here for the moment isn't best utilized. So some of those fruits, for example, would be mangoes, pineapples, passion fruit, tree tomato, uh, limes. I think the first things first is the education piece. Um, and that sits with uh, us to help explain to the consumer the benefit of using real fruit versus flavoring, um, both from a health standpoint, um, but also a pride standpoint. They, the second people say, oh, from Kenya, um, then they do have a different appreciation for the product. And um, so, yeah, it's a slow burner. Um, we're right at the beginning of that curve of people caring more about the product um, that they're eating and consuming here. Clearly, Kenyans are more familiar with, with eating tropical fruit straight from the tree, whether it's banana or passion or mango. But in the West and the UK, where I'm from, we're not so lucky to have uh, fresh mango trees in our gardens. And there's far more of an appetite for dried tropical fruits, um, such as mangoes. But there's certainly an increasing appetite now for having access to a, to a dried mango that people can have 12 months of the year. We're excited there's a growing market. The food insecurity challenges that are plaguing Africa today are not unsolvable. They're not exotic. They have solutions, and those solutions lie on the people of the continent, the lies in you and me. The lies in leveraging on what you have, which is you, your skills, your talents, to be able to apply them in the entire agro-value chain, but connect the dots with other actors, because it's only by connecting the dots that we can be able to drive transformational change. In Kenya and other lower-income countries, improving infrastructure for storage, processing and transportation is essential. In higher income regions, major interventions are needed at the retail and consumer levels. By cutting down food waste, more than 70 billion tons of greenhouse gases could be prevented from being released into the atmosphere. This presents one of the greatest possibilities for individuals, companies and communities to contribute to reversing global warming while at the same time feeding more people, increasing economic benefits and preserving threatened ecosystems.